Now, the Africa Cup of Nations begins on the coast of the Atlantic in Cameroon this weekend. Lots of excitement building up here in West Africa over that tournament. But the city of Limbe, where some of the games will take place, is in the region which has experienced over the past four years the effects of war with the Anglophone separatist conflict hitting it hard. Anglophone America has, I mean, sorry, Anglophone Cameroon rather, has been in a state of war with the rest of the nation following decades of tensions between the country's French and English speaking people. That, of course, is the result of the colonial division of what is now Cameroon many years ago. Most of the Africa Cup of Nations is taking place in the Francophone part. There is one Anglophone venue, Limbe, and separatist groups have openly threatened the tournament because they don't want it to take place on Anglophone soil. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now on the line by the African Affairs Analyst and Publisher of Africa Briefing, John O'Fay Ansa. Uh, great to see you, uh, John. Um, the joy of a major football tournament like the Africa Cup of Nations is obviously colossal, but so too the pressure to keep it safe, isn't it? Yes, um, the government you know, has its uh, work cut out to make sure the games um, go on safely. In fact, uh, you mentioned the separatist world, the, the southwestern region of Limbe and Buya, those two cities where some of the uh, part of the tournament will be um, uh, uh, will be taking place. But these cities, especially in Limbe, you know, uh, have a very, very heavy um, armed government armed presence to forestall any um, activity by the Abazonia Defense Forces. That is the defense forces of the separatist, the English speaking separatist group, you know, within the country. I mean, but, but I mean, I suppose the question is how much of a threat do separatist rebels pose to this Africa Cup of Nations tournament? Because, I mean, just last week, groups fighting for the independence of Anglophone Cameroon set off an explosion in that city that you're talking about, Limbe, and that's a city that will host some of the games. Yes, they set off uh, two um, uh, IEDs, uh, improvised explosive devices, one on the 30th of... Um, December and one only yesterday, Thursday, with uh, their defense chief, the defense chief of the Amazonia Defense Forces, uh, Kapu Daniel, vowing to disrupt the, the games, you know, in Limbe, despite the heavy armed presence. But personally, I don't see them um, making any 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 impact, you know, on the on the games because um, the government, you know, has gone to great lengths you know to ensure the safety of both you know the supporters and the teams taking part i mean there's a heavy military government military presence in both uh, cities Buya and the uh, limbe limbe is hosting the uh, four uh, teams um, sorry four countries um mali and uh, mali tunisia mauritania and gambia Right, but I don't see them making any any impact any impact at all on the on the games. Well, I mean, uh, as you mentioned, the games, of course, taking place in Limbe, but some of the same uh, teams staying in Boya, and that is a town that has been targeted regularly more recently by violent groups. I mean, that has to be a concern, doesn't it, for the teams staying there as well as their supporters. Well, uh, the government has you know, uh, has taken or is or has taken measures. In fact, already they've already imposed uh, dusk uh, to dawn curfew, you know, in those in those areas. And then, like I said earlier on, there's a very very heavy military presence in those parts. And we shouldn't forget that. Look, Africans like football. Um, I like football. Africans like football. And Cameroonians, you know, are happy that uh, the Afcon. You know, is being staged in their country, right? So, um, look, they will, they will, they will take any measures necessary to forestall any disaster, you know, 
by the by the by the separatist forces. Right, and uh, just moving away um, from the security question. I mean, it's been six years since Cameroon won the rights to host the Africa Cup of Nations. Is it finally ready to welcome the continent? Because it was originally meant to host the tournament in 2019, but it was moved to Egypt due to concerns over preparations. Yes, by this time they are ready. In fact, from 2019, it was uh, moved to this, this, this tournament should have been held last year, but it was postponed because of the obvious uh, COVID uh, pandemic. But uh, the government, you know, has um, uh, pulled out all the stops to ensure, you know, a successful staging of this um, tournament. All the stadia, the stadiums are ready. Everything is in place to ensure a very successful um, tournament. Right. And, and beyond the threat of, of disruption that we were talking about earlier, I mean, let's talk about the games themselves. I don't know how much of a football buff you are, but a lot of pressure on the Cameroonian team, the indomitable Lions, who are hoping to reclaim their first title since 2017. I mean, what's your assessment of their chances? Well, um, they are the hosts, but um, and they, and they, I must point out that they have not lost any match on home soil since 1988. But they faced very, very formidable opposition. I mean, in my opinion, the favorites are Algeria, led by um, Manchester City's uh, Riyad Maris, and also um, Egypt, led by Bo Salah. And we have uh, Senegal, who are also very strong contenders to give the title, led by, um, what do you call him, Sadio Mane of, um, of Liverpool, and the, and their goalkeeper Edward Mendy of Chelsea, who's one currently one of the top um, goalkeepers in the um, in Europe. So, um, well, Cameroon have the home advantage, but I'm not sure you know they are strong enough to win the tournament. I tip either um, Algeria, Egypt, and um, Senegal to lift it, and also we have the outsiders like um Côte d'Ivoire, you know, featuring players like um uh like um, um Eric Bailly of Manchester United and um one other player from also from uh, from a uh, Crystal Palace. I can't recall his name now, yeah. Right. Okay, well, I mean, we've got less than a minute. Uh, of course, many fans are hoping that a win on home soil for the Cameroonians will unite the nation and bridge the gap between the Anglophones and the Francophones. I mean, could football be the peacemaker where the politicians have failed, briefly? I don't think so. Look, even yesterday um, in Yaoundé, the capital Yaoundé, both the Muslims and the and the Christians held you know, a, a prayer, a mass prayer, to ensure the success of the games. But I'm not sure these games last only four weeks. This tournament will come and go. But the problem, you know, that you no know, that exists in the country. I mean, between the separate the Anglo-Full separatists and the central government will still persist. So I'm not sure that this uh, tournament uh, will help in any way. To, to 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 defuse the situation okay john thanks very much indeed as always uh, john ofe answer the african affairs analyst and publisher of africa briefing talking to me there about the upcoming africa cup of nations taking place in cameroon this weekend